Hello and welcome to another episode of the Pokestop Podcast. Enter the Nerdosphere's Pokemon Go Podcast. I'm your host, Clayton Presson. I'm joined, as always and forever, by my brother, Corbin. Hey, hey, hey. And our good friend, Chris. Howdy, y'all. <laughs> I don't really talk like that, just for the record. We had to, I guess, interject a, a hick into the mix. Well, he does look wow. Mark Wong. Dude. Sort of. <laughs> it's bad enough, right? You don't gotta rub it in. God. Well, let's all talk about. Yeah. Some Pokemon. Pokemon. That is why we're here. Let's. What's been a experience? A new Pokemon. A story. Oh, something okay. that's happened to you in the past week. Sure. Okay. So I went up to Kirksville this past weekend to go see my wife. And while I was there, I did find a Squirtle. A lot of Gastlys nearby who never popped. That was frustrating. But I did catch a few, but they weren't notable. But when I went to Colton's for dinner, Wigglytuff. Hold on. The restaurant or your brother's? the restaurant clayton no never mind colton why was i thinking colton <laughs> clayton corbin colton it seems like colton should be somewhere in that mix but it's not I a wiggly tough popped hey hey so i caught that so expand the pokedex that was a great time Word. uh realized that i had a knitter and female and knit a queen but not a knit arena so evolved it expanded the pokedex it was a so i hatched a lot of eggs that was the thing i did the most hatched a lot of eggs did you spend any money real money yeah no i don't do that Chris, I don't spend real money <laughs> on this game. You're better than most of us. A Magnemite popped at a lure <laughs> and it dashed on me after a Raz and Ultra Ball. Ooh. I threw a hissy fit. That sucks. I mean, a grown man throwing a hissy fit. Yeah, that does suck. Okay. Okay. So, so I mean, that's my story. <clears throat> By all means. Sh shower us with your adventures, Chris. <laughs> How much money did you spend, Chris? I spent ten dollars. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, here's the thing, too. Um, <clears throat> my wife and I had agreed not to spend any money because we were like silently boycotting the game ever since they decided, okay, we're taking tracking completely out of the game. We're doing all this and made all these different changes. They slowly starting to win me back a little, not a lot, but a little bit after sure. the most recent update. Which um, last episode I was on. Um, I had mentioned that I wanted a refresh on the nearby. Mm -hmm. um, didn't quite get that, but it is a ton more accurate now. It is a ton more so accurate. when it does actually leave the 200 meter proximity that you are in, it does go away from your nearby sightings list. It's much easier to box in a Pokemon. It, you yes, get an it really idea is. Of where it's at. Yeah. So even without the tracking, you can still kind of subtly figure it out. Um, a lot of people on Reddit, of course, are making uh, kind of circular graphs about. Um, how to track something down if you know that you're within a certain area so you walk in a straight line to point A uh, and then you keep walking till it vanishes and you keep that point marked and then there's, there's a bunch of math and nerd stuff involved so I haven't done any of that <laughs> but um, I, I too went up to St. Louis this past weekend I uh, had, the, had the weekend free to myself so uh, my buddy uh, Danny and I we went up and just tried to hit some of the familiar spots we went to Forest Park um, not as much action there as we were hoping for. Uh, we also went to Tillis Park, which was what you said was a Growlithe nest originally. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. Not necessarily your fault. They changed all the nests a few weeks back. So um, that was kind of on us. We didn't know if it was still going to be that way or not. So we made a final stop at De Pere Park. Um, and that was the new Growlithe nest in St. Louis, uh, which was really nice. There was people everywhere. I I've never seen that many people at a public park for one reason i mean it's a small park like relatively speaking right um especially the I, I would call like the playable area i mean there's still like soccer fields and another like long trail off to the side but yeah. really it's all focused around there's this pond and there's four poker stops like cluttered together and on the other side of the pond there's about three more and then off down the trails like another two or three and it was nice because there was like people everywhere and they were like four lures going at one time and magic carp are just flying out of this thing it's, it, was, <laughs> it was incredible i need magic carp uh we all do and I need magic i'm gonna i'm gonna tell you i'm gonna tell you a couple places where you can go get you some real nice Is one of them bonds air 
It is Bon Terre oh, Lake. Oh, we need to go to Bon Terre Lake. That place, Lake. that place is my favorite local spot. Anybody in the St. Francis County area who listens to this, Bon Terre Lake. Um, there is one Poké stop there, um, and it's it's a nice walk around because in the daytime, uh, I didn't realize night and day was actually playing as big a role as it is now. But night or day, there will always be Magic Carp, Slowpoke, and Psyduck, and every once in a while you get a, a, a Gold Duck. Um, but at the evening time, um, when the game goes dark, there is Dratini. Ooh. So, yeah. I uh, couldn't quite figure out why everybody in Bonterre had Dragonites. And, and was, that's why. And that's why. Because <laughs> they have a friggin' Dratini nest. Uh, I did get a Dragonair. Um, that was when I finally called it quits because um, we were going to leave and my buddy's phone had died. And I'm just kind of like, well, can we keep playing? Because my <laughs> phone isn't dead. So he's like, oh, whatever, fine. <laughs> So um, I'm walking around, and all of a sudden, I'm like, oh, there's another Dratini. I'll be right back. So I run this loop. And I'm not kidding you. It's like like a half-mile loop. I don't know, three-quarters of a mile almost. And I ran almost the entire thing. And I'm like, <laughs> come to find out it was at the very end. So literally, if I would have just walked 30 feet in the opposite direction, right. the Dratini would have popped. I was like, damn it. So I did all that work for nothing. Still got it anyway. But... Um, so that was really cool. Uh, while we were at DePere Park, uh, I ran into what I can only describe as uh, the king of nerds. Um, this gentleman was... But not in the good way? No. Like, okay. like the bad kind of nerd. Like the bad kind of nerd. Like his like mom... Like the dork. His mom makes him Hot Pockets still. Like even <laughs> though he knows how to so use a microwave, mom is still bringing right. the Hot Pockets down to the basement. The Hot Pocket isn't the issue. It's the mom's making the Hot Pocket. Right. Yeah. <laughs> he clearly still does not pay rent anywhere. So uh, we first encounter this this gentleman uh, when we're walking around. Like, hey, anybody, you know, see any growls over here? And he's like, uh, are you working on, uh, we're going to like your second Arcanine? And I was like, no, nah, I'm getting my first. He's like... Oh, no, I'm working on my third. <laughs> I'm like, uh, well, good for you, man. Well, that's that's nice. So just over here, just over here, where you said. <laughs> so got enough Arcanine, or got enough growl to get an Arcanine, which is pretty nice. Well, we, uh, like I said, small park, um, but there was like, I swear to God, there had to been like almost 100 people there. It was incredible. And it was really cool. Everybody was kind of getting like digging off the vibe and stuff. But this guy just comes back around all of a sudden. You hear him start talking about all the magic carp that are popping up from this lure, <laughs> and he's like, "Man, I need like twenty more magic carp. That way, I you know finally get my fifth Gyarados." What? Like, yeah, I was like, fifth? "Really? No way." I, are you really trying to like? So wait a second. Do you fact check? He's working you, like, on his pull... fifth Gyarados, but only has three Arcanines. Right? What a I'm scrub gonna... this dude yeah, is. Yeah, for real. So I <laughs> I don't know. I, it's, it was like it was a race to the bottom with this guy. <laughs> like <laughs> they were, oh man, we was talking about something. I don't remember what it was, but I, I just I know the line I said to him was like, "Well, if we're having a smallest penis contest," and I like talk about some awful experience <laughs> I had with the game. He's like, "Oh, it was pretty bad," and I'm like, "Yeah, it's like, it all sucks." Okay, we're here for the same stupid reason. We're playing this <laughs> dumb mobile game. Nobody cares how many Gyarados you have. Garadai, how many? Whatever the plural is, Garadoses, Dosidos, Garadis, Garadosidos. But uh, so yeah, that pretty much rounds it out. Uh, so I, I don't know. Like I'm pretty sure that if I had five Gyarados, my wife would be like, "Take me." <laughs> <laughs> Your could... wife maybe because she's really into Pokemon Go. Yeah. My wife, no. Your wife doesn't say "take me" whenever you're like, dude. When I just have, got I just I got have. a victory bell. What up? No, she does not. And she's like, fine with me. <laughs> God. <laughs> what a life you must lead. I mean, with that much fire, it's really super effective against that grass type. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> with your burning desire. <clears throat> um, super effective. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, I uh, rounded out the Pokedex this weekend at 108. Pokemon Dirty Talk. It's super effective. <laughs> <laughs> That's terrible. So what what was the CP of your Arcanine? Ah, uh, 1,400? Maybe? I don't know. It's not super big. Here's the thing. Man, you check that IV, though. I'm the, not... The new meta game is all about that IV. I'm not going for strength. I'm going for collection. I mean, if I get... The, 
if I get to play a few gems, cool. If I get to put some good stuff on there, whatever. But honestly, like I'm not measuring the the worth of my experience based on how strong my Pokemon are necessarily. Uh, mostly because I find the whole process of leveling them up to be really extraneous and unbalanced because Stardust is an incredible commodity that you only get a hundred of it every time you capture a Pokemon. Mm -hmm. And there's such an imbalance between how much you get versus how much you put out for just the right. smallest action. Like even, even some of the lowest um, power-ups I've seen like, you know, a uh, thousand or 1200, but then they go up to like 22, 2400 and it just exponentially grows from there. And you're like, yeah. I'm not getting enough of this to justify powering up all my Pokemon this way. It's just, I don't know. It's just seem, it seems like almost too that. much. Yeah, it's it's too much work for very little gain. Yeah. So, yeah. But the more I can collect, the happier I am. Necessarily. So. I gotcha. Nice. Clayton. Well, I admittedly haven't been doing a whole lot of Pokemon Go. However, I did what? make a quick trip up to St. Louis for a job interview that didn't pan out. But we talked about that briefly on Enter the Nerd Sphere. We did. We did. So I just Shameless went to plug. Lumiere Structure Park, hatched three five km eggs, filled up my bag almost of stuff, and that's. I did run into this mom and her two young boys while I was walking through like the wooded area of Lumiere Sculpture Park, where there's, like only plaques on trees that you can't even see. Oh, uh, you were gonna talk about like the the giant anal beads that are just <laughs> no, laying off in no, the woods there. No, I past, love crawling on those. those anal beads. <laughs> But uh, I was walking by, and I hear the little kids go, he's playing, he's playing. <laughs> and then we get, I get like 30 feet probably, and I hear one of them go, what team are you? And I turn around, and I was like, Team Mystic. And then the mom goes, we're Team Instinct. And I go, wow, that's too bad. And then the other little kid, he was a little bit older, he goes, we're all the Snorlaxes. The gyms, there's three gyms there. They had all just recently turned yellow with Snor Snorlaxes at the head of each one. And I guess they each had put Snorlaxes. Like, how cool is that? A mom and her two kids taking gyms. We're the Snorlaxes. <laughs> Except they're Team Instinct, know. so poor life choices. I thought that was cute. Pretty cool. So. Yeah, I mean, those. unfortunately, those kids are going to grow up with, like, rose art crayons and art <laughs> class. Because <like. laughs> that's Team Instinct. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Their mom buys toaster pastries instead of Pop-Tarts. I made a bookmark and I have glue in my coloring book or my coloring pencil box. Did you guys ever do that? No. no. Didn't even know that was a thing. You take like a... You sure you're not your, Team your, Instinct? Your color... <laughs> <laughs> uh, your phone says Mystic, but your choices say Instinct. Oh. I You didn't even want Inst or Mystic no, until I was, I was like... Valor. Yeah. You now, want, you, honestly, you wanted I kind of wish a, I did because be I kind of regret being a part of the biggest group really honestly yeah you regret I, being the best like no right one ever was. Like, well it's not even like it's not I mean, there's really no i mean we're, we're not talking about instinct here obviously obviously but there really is no best there's just sheer amount of people there's more mystic so it almost seems like if you're uh, okay, valor so there are more opportunities for to, advancement <laughs> yeah <laughs> you really move up through the ranks over right. there i'm the best valor because there's not as many except they're all dick butts I mean, I'm kind of a dick butt. No. I'm being honest. This is true. <laughs> we can ask his wife. She will confirm. <laughs> hey, Abby. Hey, Abby. Clean the dick butt? Okay. Yeah. You know it. All right. And then Case goes, what's a dick butt? <laughs> oh, crap. <laughs> now, let's do a new segment. Oh? Pokedex comparison. Uh -oh. Hmm. And I already know who's... Got the biggest Pokedex around here. I'll go ahead and sling it on the table. But I'll, I'll start because I know I'm the worst. I've yeah. seen 80, caught 80. So at least I'm 100%. Oh, okay. Okay, all right. I, uh, I've seen 97, mm. and I've caught 92. Oh, weak. Wow. It's darn Magnemite. <laughs> <laughs> I have seen 109. No, you have not. I have caught 108. Oh, shut the, the one, front door. Electric buzz. The electric buzz. The electric buzz. The electric buzz. The electric buzz. Same stupid electric buzz. He's going to forever taunt you. 
Dude, I was actually on my way to a job driving through Jackson, and I just happened to have my phone open because I'm a bad adult. And um, I'm a passenger. Of course, there was an electric buzz. But I'm like, I'm on company time. I can't lie. <laughs> Hang on, buddy. We got to go over here real quick. <laughs> Doesn't work that way. So. Yeah. But uh, I have a Wiggly Tough as well. Earned it. Didn't I catch did it. I not have one. I've almost earned it. I prefer to earn the, the evolutions. I do too. Personally. Although, that being said, I have an Omnistar. Yeah. And not an Omnimite. Mm. I have a Kabuto, but not a company. Um, but I'm saying, like, I have the no, higher I, evolution. I know what you're saying. Without I'm saying I wish I had the higher evolution. But of the fossil Pokemon, you have, like, the dumbest one. I'm aware. <laughs> I also have a Kabuto, though. Even more dumb than I'm a knight? I, I would mean, dare say. I mean, technically, my, my, phone, my phone's right there behind you. Be if you wanna, less. you wanna check out what I've got. If I've got something y'all ain't got. Oh, I know you do. I mean, I'm sure I've got you, things. You, you wanna you compare have... most powerful Pokemon? Um, be down for that. Let me just spend some Stardust real quick. My... <laughs> oh goodness. <Mine's> two... <laughs> no spinning Stardust. Mine's two thousand. So. What? Yeah. Really? I'm yeah. eighteen. Two thousand eight. He's got an Exeg cuter. Yeah, my Arcanine's, my Arcanine's 17. Arcanine's 17. Your Arcanine's 69. higher than mine. Mine's 16, so, hey, switch it from CP to number, though. That way you can really get a grasp of what's going on here. Venusaur. <laughs> look at all that. I don't well, even want yeah, to Yes, oh. viewers. Look at all that. Oh, speaking of which, let me see that real quick. Let's go ahead and plug it. Hand it to me. This is the absolute most frustrating thing in the world. So I finally was able to evolve a Raichu. Oh, okay. No, you okay. were not. I do. Raichu confirmed. Dang. Yeah. Man. You know what its a second move is? Thunder Brick wave. break. <laughs> that shouldn't even be possible. It's a fighting move. It does 30 damage. Why does Raichu have brick break? Not thunder. What? What is brick break? <laughs> that crappy arcade game? Why does he what have is a... That? How is that a move? Why does he have a fighting move? I don't know. Would be my question. I will tell you this. You want to know the unsung hero of the uh, HP wars right now, though? Let's do it. Come on. Straight up. Jigglypuff. 129 hp if you're like that doesn't, 4, 4, that doesn't seem like a lot look at your high your strongest pokemon and i guarantee 173 for lapras 1865 117 for exec executor 144 for my snorlax yeah wigglytuff 176 that's a lot of health chancy has a lot of health too but i don't have one I'm telling you the fairy pokemon are where it is at i don't even want to talk about my power, most powerful Straight up though, Tentacruel, that Blizzard, 100 damage on ice. That's, yeah, that's good stuff. So, yeah, my Lapras is uh, is Dragon Pulse and only does 65. Sucks, man. Kind of Sorry to hear that. All right. Well, well, let's get into some talking points here. Let's do it. Uh, first, let's get into. This is kind of some old news, but a little bit of new news at the same time. Uh, we didn't have a podcast last week, so we can briefly talk about it because mm. I really want to get into the new update uh, as the main topic. Uh, but Niantic, as we all know at this point, went hardcore shutting down all the third parties. Oh, yeah, slinging them NDAs like it was singles at a titty bar. Yeah. What uh, right. kind of went even a step further was there were a lot of IV calculators popping up that actually used, like, your data to calculate it real easy mm -hmm. they're now, shutting those down now too now i'm i'm gonna throw up my ignorance here a little bit i've seen it obviously like on, on reddit and stuff like that but i never understood what ivs were so for the it's, layman it stands for individual values i think and okay. it's basically attack uh stamina health so attack and stamina are invisible to pokemon go players but if you use the uh the IV calculator that's used for all the other Pokemon games, it actually mm -hmm. still works. They use the same system. So okay. you can figure out its its attack and its stamina in addition to its health. And you can look and see it's graded on a scale of 15, each one of those. Mm -hmm. So if it's like a 0 out of 15 on your health, you know you have a crap right. Pokemon. So okay. people are using that to basically min-max their Pokemon. So. Gotcha. So, and there were third parties that would actually be able to just look at your account mm -hmm. and figure them up for you so now you they've shut those down now just like the trackers i will say this is the only time in my life i've been slightly jealous of android users because i know that it has a more open sdk 
uh, for developers. So a lot of the third party stuff that's coming through for Pokemon Go is more readily available for Android than it is for iOS. Yeah. Which right. bums me out a little bit because one of the tracking sites that I did use um, had an app. They had and have. Uh, so they're back up on Android. Um, oh. But still not available for iOS. Yeah, no, they're still working on it. But I follow them on Twitter and stuff. So was I can it the Poke- which, is, which one was it? Poke Bliss. Poke Bliss. Poke Bliss. Yeah. So, but I just wanted to bring that up because, and their their reasoning was that it was they were basically putting a lot of the blame of their server issues on these third parties. It's which, bullshit. let's be honest, there were server issues way before. There were. And server issues continued to improve while these were continuing continuing to grow in Which, number and they only existed because you pulled tracking yeah right and yeah that's one of those things where uh one of the most famous tweets i've seen about this so far was the uh, the developer of pokevision which was probably one of the most famous of the third party sites mm-hmm. uh, right from all this and especially the one that's been making the headlines of all that um he said you don't get 80 million people to play marco polo and then take away the polo yeah I, I read that also and i was like that is just perfect and then that even sprouted like gifs and memes of like stewie playing marco pool, polo there's in a the blastoise pool. <laughs> there's a blastoise side there and he's like marco marco yeah it's it's been incredibly rough um and I know the, the thing that they were doing, um, to my understanding, is that they were actually pinging uh, the information off of the PTC, the Pokemon Trainers Club server, which I don't honestly know anybody who is logged into the PTC. Pretty yeah. much I don't either. Everyone, everyone, everyone knows who, Google. Everyone on Facebook who seems like they have that login, mm-hmm. they're always the one who, ones who have trouble Like yeah. after the updates. They're the ones who lose their information. They're mm-hmm. the ones who can't log in. Yeah. So... Yeah, that's definitely the server that has had the most issues. And so when they were uh, basically pinging that server for, you know, the API data of where and when Pokemon would spawn and how long they would be there, um, I understand, like, if you had as, let's say, even 10% of your user base was using those sites and constantly pinging it every 30 seconds or every 10 seconds or however long that these apps were allowing them to refresh, that's a lot of information being pushed back and forth. So I get the server load issue. Right. But it still doesn't excuse them taking away, you know, a very pivotal part of the game. Yeah. Well, I feel like, like you said, you don't want to get too much into this because it's weak old news, but we, <clears throat> I'm, I'm worried we're getting to a point where it's almost like permanently damaging. Like they have not done a good job of communicating to the community. The community has been outraged for weeks. Oh, my, and, my and playtime just... is definitely down like 60%. But now it's like if they brought back, Will they all? Will they win us back over 100? percent Like, are we? Are is everyone as a whole, as the community, like literally just like give it back to us so we can all start playing like like we were? Or are we like damaged now? We're like, I mean, even I if it comes back, it. it's like, I mean, fine, whatever. But I've kind of moved on because you're yeah. dick butts. I think a lot of the community is is in that boat. Like they've been burned and they've moved on. And I think just using this town, Frederick Town, as an example, we we took a gym on monday my lap and it there for just three. it just got taken down today really and that was never the case no it was and hours it, yeah it was literally hours or like you drive away i get home and it's, it's gone. gone yeah the turnover was so high now i'm able to sit in a gym that was only a level three yeah when we took it and i it sits there for days mm. so i think that that speaks volumes because this town was just overtaken by pokemon go trainers yeah for sure so and I don't know that I don't know that all of them would come back if this new thing gets officially <clears throat> right. rolled out. Because the thing that we're gonna get into, it's it's different. It's still not even like the way it was. Yeah. So it's like Well let's go it... ahead and let's go ahead and get into it. Uh so on the eighth there was an update. There was a update on the eleventh that uh increased stability and uh uh minor text issues. <laughs> Uh, but the major update was this was on the eighth, and it uh, introduced several things. Let me pull up the notes real quick and just go through it. By the way, do we really need to know that the Pokemon broke free? I know, <laughs> it's not in the ball. The Pokemon broke free. <laughs> well, yeah, I think that that was Thanks. more like maybe a nostalgia move. Because doesn't, doesn't the game say that? Uh, no. It doesn't say. Uh, that? There's no. Sure? There's no it text. When you throw it, and it goes. Rrr, 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 and it, it, just, it just goes. Bloop. There's, okay. there's no text that pops I'm, on the screen. Okay, I'll believe you. Uh, add a dialogue to remind trainers that they should not play while traveling beyond a certain speed. 
and they are now have to confirm that they are a passenger. Real quick, someone uh, I saw a post the other day, it might have even been a tweet, that goes, the most said lie on the internet since I'm over 18. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or, yes, I have read the terms and service. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, made improvements to the accuracy of the curb ball throw. Fix above the prevented nice, great, and excellent from uh, not grading experience. Yeah. yeah. Uh, fixed achievements showing incorrect metal icons. Uh, <laughs> enabled the ability for trainers to change their nickname one time. Which I did. Jason Cadis is still taken. So I guess I'm going to sit as Clayton Preston for like years until it's open. What's up. Who, what, who's Jason Cadis? That's my gamer tag on everything. Uh, on literally everything. Are you and gratuitous? In fact, I just. I am signed... gratuitous now. Nice. Yeah. Your wife is like, where you been, Holmes? Uh, well, she also broke her phone this past week. No. Yeah, so. So she's, her, her silent boycott is like for reals. Oh, it's going hard. <laughs> <laughs> Not even tempted. <laughs> Oh, that sucks. Yeah, I do have like 300 Magikarp candies from this past weekend, and she's like, why didn't you catch me? And I'm like, okay, first of all. <laughs> like log into her account on yeah. your phone? And then got to log back into mine to catch the same... No, I ain't doing that. I love you, but that that's is, way too much work. That is a lot of work. Dang. If we're being completely honest, that is a lot of work. And if you want to go down the, the paranoid path, like what if, what if you signing out, signing in as her, then signing back in as yourself, you're that one rare user that... His account got deleted. Lost all me data. Yeah. Because you logged out. I ain't having it. I ain't doing it. All because you logged out to catch your wife a magic card. All right. All right. All right. Uh, resolved issues with battery saver mode for the iPhone users. Um, added visuals for the team leaders. Uh, they are currently testing a variation of the nearby Pokemon feature with a small group of players. Looks like in the San Fran um, area. Mm. Also, minor text fixes. Uh, just so you know. Minor, more more text fixes? Text That's fixes. twice now. That's uh, every, three times. every time. Minor text <laughs> fixes. Okay, so the big thing coming out of here, obviously, was uh, they, they, again, they're not very clear with what they're doing. So they say they're testing a variation of the nearby Pokemon and then everybody goes into their nearby and it's now called sightings and the only thing that's changed is this grass behind the Pokemon. Yay. Right. So ini initially everyone was like, you can't what see are you doing? Yeah. You're supposed to be fixing tracking. So, but well, since we did then, not fix it. We now right. know that it is more accurate. That yes. tab is more accurate. We tested it out on an Abro. We, it was actually in like the yard of that farm place that's right by Country Mart. Okay. I don't even know the name, but it was. So we couldn't like, get to we it. We couldn't get to it. But we knew but where we it was. We knew where it was uh, using because we because we boxed it. Got it. But what's interesting is the new nearby. Okay, so what was nearby is now sightings, mm -hmm. and now there's a new nearby that we this, cannot we participate can't use. In. That's in yeah. the test group. But there is a test group. And it shows specific Pokemon at specific Poke stops in your area. Like a picture of the of and you have to be like, Oh, I know where that truck's at. Right. Right. But it even it's even better than that. You can click on the Pokemon, like how you used to be able to select just a specific Pokemon to track it. Uh -huh. You can click on that Pokemon and it will show you, it'll zoom out and show you where that Pokestop is. And then give you the how many steps that Pokestop is from you. That's kind of cool. Well, but there's no hunting. No. With that, it's just like, hey, you want a polywag? Here it is. I'll tell no. you exactly where to go. But that was Pokevision. But Pokevision was in means to an end because we couldn't hunt. But Pokevision also showed you... But now you... we have the best of both worlds. Not exactly. Kind of. I was going to say, kind because of. Pokevision mm, showed you where everything was. This shows you where something is at a specific, like, at a Pokestop. Right. Which, let's be honest, how many times do you drive by a Pokestop and it's barren? There's nothing there. But I think with this update, it's not like that. No. Like, I think you'd go And I think people more often, or because we couldn't hunt, people were using Pokevision to just find where nests were. Sure. But I still want the thrill of, you know, going down, choosing the wrong path, like, oh, I go this way. Oh, now I have to go this way. But yeah. it literally but telling me where to go for the Pokemon I want takes the thrill out. Just playing devil's advocate, the initial reveal trailer, which we have to take as the ideal version of Pokemon Go that Niantic is going for, searching for Pokemon is 
it points an arrow with a certain amount of km to this pokemon that still seems a little bit different because you don't ultimately know where you're walking the it's arrow like points you in a direction and tells you it's 300 meters away you know where you're walking yeah but it's also kind of like just, it just seems different because you're like oh it's like it's like a mile away and like i'm and i'm running like oh i gotta turn right okay yeah well how many times have you played skyrim though and you had a waypoint to your location and still had to kind of like is this the door or yeah. is it on the other side of this wall because it stopped at this door you know yeah so i i don't know it could go either way i think everything there's so much still that hasn't been fleshed out and i know that they're trying and i know for but do we though because that's the thing like they're not communicating and that's the biggest issue that i've had with them but you want to hope that I, because I they're not that you, they're working on something yeah i would have agreed with you before the information on this came out because this shows that they're at least trying to satisfy us or hold us over to some degree yeah and mo everyone who's got the test is like clamoring for it yeah there's only positive things coming out of it on the interwebs and i think another thing too that has spoiled us is the fact that we got the game within the first two weeks right so we, we got the taste of like pure tracking yeah and basically subsequently after that anybody who has picked up the game since then doesn't really know any better so whether or not their game experience has been diminished by that is really kind of that's a good substantial point. because we knew what it was like before and playing it now it's it, it's very similar to i play league of legends a lot and if you jumped into league right now you would know it as it exists this moment you wouldn't know what it was like season four season three season two before half the champions were in the game or before our items were completely taken away and the metas were changed a hundred times you know mm, yeah so it's i think it's really on a, on a per user basis you know what level of enjoyment or what um what you're really getting out of the game so yeah, I mean, I guess I'm stubborn. I probably will never be satisfied, but I will always circle back to why can't you just give me what it was? And maybe we'll still get it. I mean, that kind of comes like back why to why it go they, away and why can't you just give it back? Communicating better. Yeah, I mean that's definitely what you know what got the meat hooks in to begin with. Because I had no issues with the game. Like I would, obviously it was very bare. I, I mean, it was very stripped down, but like in its core, it was what it was doing was still good. Right. Like I. I was excited by the by the prospect of like what more could they do, but right. never, not, not at any point was I like, oh, this is less than like this could be better. Yeah, yeah. Who would have thought? Hey, we're gonna agree. take three steps back and one step forward. Yeah, right. So, I don't know. I don't know. I think I think this shows that at least they're trying to appease the outrage. Sure, we but still, I guess we still don't know for sure because they are not communicating. They've done a little bit. As long um, as I get my gas as much, not as much as they probably should have, but they are, I guess, looking to hire a community manager again. So they're doing a little. Help. They're doing a little tweeting. I mean, again, not as much as. Are I mean, they? Yeah, I wasn't on there recently, but I've been trying to see if they're like tweeting anything, and they, it's just not very it's active more than what since Comic Con. Because it was because it, it was silence, and we didn't get to talk about this because we didn't record last week. Mm -hmm. But they had turned off. Uh, comments on their Facebook page, mm -hmm. and they, they had pulled their email. And they had pulled their email from their websites and their Facebook page. Like they were done talking to people. Oh, I bet because it was blowing up. Probably and, and ironic because they weren't talking. But at that's all. just like well, and and uh, that we, just goes to show that they are they are learning hardcore. And we forgot to mention the the whole like three day period where the internet exploded with, I want refunds. Oh, yeah. yeah, I got my refund. I got refunds too. <laughs> Not, I didn't get refund for everything, <laughs> because uh, you don't get refunded for seventy dollars worth of in-app purchases. <laughs> but um, yeah, everybody was asking for refunds. People were boycotting the game. Um, I know that we were kind of like in the same boat. Like I was still playing it every once in a while, but I definitely was not spending the money. And the only reason I spent any money was Ken. I went out this weekend and I had a full hatchery of eggs. So you got some of those incubators. Yeah, it's uh, rating on I on the app store has gone back up well that's because they keep releasing new updates and it, it refreshes it refreshes oh, that's why a lot of people like i gotcha they so, uh, the, the day the, after all that they released an update. update and a lot of people thought that, that they did that just to refresh their uh, mm -hmm. i remember that now okay the internet was so, ablaze with conspiracy theory yeah. as it is to do. however i will say that that i think Makes that's sense, probably though. what lit a fire under them and started the little communication that we have so far mm -hmm. and i bet you is what fueled the new nearby because they gotta do something Solution. because when you're getting how much money do you think they lost like we'll never know but how much money do you think they lost from refunds 
and then all it dropped in 24 hours it dropped from like what a five rating to it was a like one it was, rating. it was about a four yeah. and a half to a one and a half so i mean we're talking and this that is, means something and this is the <laughs> first time because usually the internet is this echo chamber of a vocal minority of people that will become outraged over a product when really the vast majority of end users are like they just is just okay with it yeah they just yeah. consume it and they move on they don't really care you know if it's good or if it's bad um, it's very similar to the way that, like, with cell phone companies, when was the last time you called AT&T or Sprint or Verizon and said, hey, service is still running great, just want to let you guys know, good job. Right. The only time you hear anything is a complaint. That's the only time you call into places like that. And so, in most cases, when something is wrong or it is broken, it seems like, oh my gosh, the internet is blowing up. But really, you're talking about, it could be, just as an example, if 100 people bought a, a game and it something went wrong 10 of them so we're talking 10 percent of people will be the ones on the internet making claims but this is i i don't know it's a little unprecedented because i don't know of any game that has kind of backpedaled this hard and i've seen the community turn on it just like that overnight yeah. and, I, I, and i'll be honest i was part of it a little bit you know because you know we all asked for some refunds and stuff like that and i left a bad review i'm not gonna lie i left a bad review too a I real mean, bad review yeah so I mean, it's it's one of those things where I want to support you no matter what it is that you're doing. But, but you need to hear. Yeah. You need to understand that what you did was the most incredibly disingenuous thing I've ever seen anybody do to their fans. Right. Whereas you take a company, I know this is apples and oranges, but you take a company like CD Projekt Red, who, again, relatively small developer in terms of AAA video game developers, you know, we released Witcher 2, and it had decent critical success, and not so much financial success, you know, relatively speaking. But then The Witcher 3 comes out, and they're like, hey, here's this huge 300-hour game. By the way, here's all of our DLC for free. Enjoy, guys. And it's like, oh, man, this game's not working. We're having these frame rate issues. Cool. Week one, we got a patch. We fixed it, you know. Right. And they're just immediately, they're on it. And again, this is these are both two teams of relatively small size in comparison, but... You know, this is an example of people who are doing it right and people who have good intentions but are doing things very wrong by their by their fans yeah. and their community. I completely agree. at the agree. end of the day, we are the ones who are making your success. Yeah. It's like, I don't know. I actually, I actually mentioned they should look to uh, Blizzard or Bungie and see how they handle games like this that are online, constantly evolving, and mm -hmm. how to be transparent and communicate communicate communi communicate properly mm -hmm. and listen to your fans because man i mean and it sounds like because like horror stories from like ingress started popping up about how it took them a year to like fix a couple bugs and to get like uh numbers in their inventory so they could see how many items they had it took a year for them to put that in there wow. so it was like there for a few days it was like what's gonna happen to this game <laughs> well, it sounds like it all things considered, Ingress was just a proof of concept right. for the Pokemon company to go, hey, can you do this with Pokemon? Right, and yeah. I I almost feel like it's, part of me believes they bit off more than they could chew. Well, I, it's, I it's I almost interesting. Agree. Is it not interesting a little bit that um, Nintendo wouldn't step in in any sort of capacity because obviously there's going to be indirect or directly negative connotation to the brand because of this but it creates plausible deniability to an extent i mean the fact that nintendo's brand is nowhere on this game mm -hmm. and as a matter of fact nintendo's dro uh, stock dropped when people kind of realized that like it was going up going up and they're like wait a minute nintendo is not involved in this yeah Phew. you mm -hmm. know turn the slider down a little bit i think so. part of the problem too was they were niantic has been obviously greedy in the sense that they put the release of their game worldwide before everything else yeah so like when they release in australia you know there were server issues and they release in america there were major server issues so mm -hmm. why did they not take a step back fix everything and then because they just like kept pushing it out kept pushing it out kept pushing it out and that was part of the problem they wanted the whole cake but they got sick on the first piece yeah I mean, dang. It, <laughs> who, imagine, dang. imagine if this was a restaurant. Like, imagine if McDonald's was like, we're going to release 100 stores. Uh, your food sucks. No, 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 no. Well, we're going to get people there first, and then we'll improve yeah. the food. That's, like, that's not, yeah, how, that that's not how it works. 
Or your, if you're there food, in McNuggets. Your food is giving everyone food poisoning, and they don't want to come back. Well, we still have 90 more swords to uh, release, so we're going to do that first, and then we'll investigate. Right. <laughs> so. All right. Do we have any final thoughts? I'm in, I'm in, I'm intrigued by the nearby. I want like, to tr- like, I, like I said, I want to try it. And it, truly, at the end of the day, what I really want right now are Squirtles and Gastlies. So give me a way of finding Squirtles and Gastlies, and I'll be happy for a little bit until I get bored. And I'll be right. like, give me a way of tantalize me. Yeah, I don't know. They, they, they got to do something because the amount of time that I used to spend on this game versus now. Like, it used to be every time I was in the car, like, oh, yeah. Pokemon Go's got to be on. Yeah. Now And I loved it. Like, it was, it was good attention. Sure. But now it's to the point where even if I see anything, I'm not going to be able to find it. Yeah. And so I just give up. I'm like, I'm not even, not even going to tease myself with the possibility of something being there. I, right. I'm like George McFly. Like, I don't think I can handle that kind of disappointment. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. It's really the only, honestly, the only time I play now is when like I make a plan to like go to somewhere specific that's a nest or mm-hmm. someplace like the zoo that I know I'm going to you know have a lot of stops and a lot of fun yeah otherwise it's not worth it no point so i really want to try out the new nearby and see if it brings back some of the life i mean fingers crossed i think we're not ready to give up on it yet because god forbid we we get two episodes into this show (laughs) and we're like the game was great and that's like it sucks we're done (laughs) right deuces right and the the you know, just to quickly touch on it, the the refresh rate does does help. The biggest issue I had with teasing myself in Kirksville was like, oh, there's a ghastly, and Rachel being like, it's not on mine. Killed the app, pulled back up. Oh, yeah, it's, yeah. It, that was old news. That is a step yeah. in the right direction. If anybody is listening, that is a good move. Yes. Yeah. What happens I mean, after honestly, that is up to you. <laughs> you can. It does take significantly more wandering, but you can box in Pokemon now mm-hmm. and find them. Is it ideal? No. Is it what we want? But at the end of the day, is that a form of hunting? Well, I mean, have you ever seen a missing child search party on the news where it's like 50 people long (laughs) at arm's length? That's how we have to catch Pokemon now. (laughs) Ghastly! It disappeared on mine! Everybody move over to the left! (laughs) Everybody pivot on Steve! And then we all move like Red Rover style on him. (laughs) Cool. (laughs) I smell a video. (laughs) Uh, do we have that many friends? <laughs> <laughs> well, well, the this Saturday is the St. Louis Mystic Meetup oh. at Forest Park at the world's there's at the at World's least, Fair Pavilion. There's at least twenty six people going. I what, mean, but the interest is high, right? Like, there's a lot of people. There's interested. a lot of people interested, but there's only like twenty six people. That That's why I, I wanted to go to the planetarium thing tonight because there was confirmed like three hundred people going. You know what else was happening thing. tonight? A tower, a party thing at Tower Grove, and it had like. 400 something people saying they were going i was like how come all these people aren't going to the planetarium to like battle it out and get your color up on the thing i don't know all i can think is is like somebody find a volcano because we got to sacrifice some virgins <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> so, i'm good, just kidding good luck this day and age not everybody's that much of a nerd only some all right well that's been episode two of the pokestop podcast <laughs> And this time, don't play your, uh, your I'm, music because I'm we not, have we have outro music. I know, I, I really, heard it. Really mucked with it, you know. <laughs> well, nobody you, told me that was gonna be there. You Grimer. <laughs> oh, I see what you did there. That was super lame. All right. I'm a Pikachu you from behind this mi- on, mic. <laughs> you can find us on YouTube. We are Enter the Nerdosphere. We're also on Podbean and on iTunes. Yeah. You can check out our other podcasts if you want. We do a weekly news and rumors. Uh, Nerdosphere Roundup where we talk about all the juicy tidbits from tidbits. movies, film, games how's all that, sorts of stuff. How's that Suicide Squad review? Uh, I saw, saw it last I saw night. I see it and okay. then we'll be putting it up. Okay. So. And then I also want to put up uh, a No Man's Sky review. That could be the next one. Sure. Because we have a, we have a, a not really a let's play but a it's a let's play. Is it, is, it, is it technically a let's play? You I don't know play what. it. <laughs> sure. Well, I did a let's play of No Man's Sky day one. So and that, that's up and being viewed. And you know what? If you, really, if you like that Growlithe video, keep sharing it. Because we are, as of right now... He's, my brother is eagerly uh, talking about...
about our Pokemon Go vlogs. We've done several. More will be coming. We did one that was called A Growlithe Nest, where we actually <laughs> went to Tillis Park before the nest changed and showcased the um, sheer amount of Growlithe over there. And we are up to 1,226. We broke 1,000 on day four, and on day four had a 300 gain. Nice. So, I mean, so we're on day five. Doing it. We're on day Share five. Share it if you like it. Make sure you subscribe. There'll be more on the way. And awesome. Next week we're gonna have another Pokestop podcast. Maybe in between now and then, the three of us can do a Pokemon Go blog. Together. Yeah, that'd be fun. We, we gotta, can, yeah, we can try to do something. Work it out. So, but we'll keep everybody posted on there. So. Yeah. Cool. That's it. And Word. as always, for everything in the Pokesphere. In the Pokesphere. We'll see you. A ball of next spirit. time. No, hang on. He, really, hang he on. did that last time. He did. All right. And as always, for everything in the Pokesphere, we'll see you Squirrel. next time. <laughs> Third time the charm. And as always, for everything in the Pokesphere, we'll not Poco, not we'll Poco, Poca, in the Pokesphere, for everything in the Pokesphere, we'll see you next time. See you guys. Next time. Bye. Yeah, whatever. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Suck it, Corbin. <laughs>